Shorty Lori, aka It's Just Lori, and welcome back. It has been way too long since I made a video. I feel like I say that a lot, but it really has been so long since I made a video. The last video I made was the beginning of January, and it is now the beginning of July. So about almost seven months of making a video. Um, if you guys saw, I'm pretty sure in one of my last videos, I actually said I moved states. So that's probably the biggest reason why I haven't made a video. I actually moved from Colorado to Oklahoma, so now I am in Oklahoma. <laughs> So it's just been a lot going on. If you guys have ever moved, you know it's just a lot happening and you just don't seem to find the time to do anything <laughs> besides move and just getting accustomed to everything, especially since it's a new state. But I'm finally back to making videos. I'm hoping to make a few like more videos. We'll just see how things go, but this was a video I've been thinking about doing, so I just decided to do it. As you can tell by the title, it is actually about Monopoly, which is my favorite game. But before we get into that, I'm actually just going to give you guys an update on my life because if you want to know, you want to know. If you don't care, oh well. I'm just going to tell you anyway. <laughs> so like I said, I did move to Oklahoma. I found a really nice apartment. I transferred my job, so I don't have to worry about finding a new job. So it's been pretty nice. Um, probably the main reason I moved, though, is just so I could be closer to my family. So it's really nice seeing my family. I have some really close family in Oklahoma, so it's just really nice to be see them more. Because usually I just only saw them on holidays and maybe in the summer. So it's actually really nice that I can just pop over and see them very, very frequently. Plus, I'm young, so why not just move? <laughs> Before um, I also show you something, I you guys are probably wondering what this says behind me. Um, it says goat. Um, so there is a Beatles poster behind it, and that's just, believe, just because the Beatles are my favorite band. Um, there's the word goat behind it because my family and I just have a love for goats. Um, we think goats are amazing. And I was out of town one weekend, and they decided to just put goat above my Beatles poster and so I just haven't left it I just left it so that's what's behind me hopefully I will have a better wall for you guys but right now since I'm just now getting back into it this is this is what you're gonna get which isn't too great which isn't like the best but you get the word goat and some beetles so that works but one of the biggest amazing things that happened when I moved is I adopted a dog and his name is Sailor. Um, I adopted him pretty quick after I got this apartment. Um, I've always said that when I, like, right when, like when I said when I was moving, I was like, I'm gonna get a dog. I'm gonna get a dog. I'm gonna get a dog. So I did. I actually got a dog. He's actually sleeping right now, so I'm not sure if he'll come and say hi. But we'll see. Sailor, he has a sticker on him. Let's see if he'll get up. Come here. Hi, Sailor. What are you doing? So this is Sailor. He is a hound mix and he's about three years old. I just adopted him. Like I said, I adopted him when I moved out here. So he's pretty new too, <laughs> but uh, we're getting really acquainted. He's a really, he's a really good dog. Um, he was actually in a foster home before I got him. So he was really accustomed to like apartments cause that's where the foster home was. And so I live in apartments. So he's really accustomed to it. He doesn't really bark sort of he barks when because I'm, I'm actually in a garage apartment so below me is a garage and he'll bark when the garage comes up but besides that he doesn't really bark so he's a really chill dog he's very wacky um but he's really sweet so i'm really awesome like i'm really thankful that i have him and hopefully you guys will see more of him when he's not sleeping but i actually just took him on a really long walk so he's probably just tired right now anyway so that is anything that's what's going on in my life right now so now Let's get into what you guys actually are watching this video for is the video. So if you've been if you know me or if you're just a really good friend of mine or family, you know that I just love Monopoly. I love Monopoly. I even have Monopoly Toms that Toms came out with. I just love Monopoly and I just like all the versions they have. It's just a really great game. So this is the first time I've actually made a video like this, so hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully it turns out good. I'm very excited for it. I haven't even like done this i am going to open a monopoly game in front of you guys like a new version that i have never seen and you guys can just see my reactions to it and you guys can see it i actually really like these videos because when i see a game i want to know what people think of it so <laughs> i'm one of those people that look on youtube and like hey what is this like how does this game look or how does this game look like is it a fun game should i buy this game and i saw a couple of people already did this video but i'm just gonna add to you guys and add my input to it um, but yeah, I'm super super pumped about this. So this one is the Monopoly Jurassic Park. 
So, like I said, oh, you can hear the pieces. <laughs> so, like I said, I love Monopoly. This is probably my ninth version of Monopoly that I own. So, whenever I have game nights, I have all the Monopoly versions you can pick. So, let me see if I can name them. I have... I have actually the world's longest Monopoly, so it's actually a Monopoly board, but it's times two. Like, it's really Monopoly owned, and it's called Monopoly the Longest Game Ever. That was fun. I have Game of Thrones. I have Lion King. I have Pixar. I have Disney Parks. I have Big Bang Theory. I have Toy Story, and I have Pixar. I, yes, I think that's all of them. And now I can add Jurassic Park. I think this is the... Oh, besides... Uh, so all my games are Disney themed except for the Big Bang Theory one and now the Jurassic Park one. So when I moved here, this is a little off topic, but so when I moved here I actually made a really good friend. Her name's Hannah. We, uh, she's probably like my twin. It's very weird. We have a lot of things in common. And so we went shopping and we were in the game board aisle because she was looking for a game. And I saw this and you know what attracted me to it? It has one of these. Oh, I wanted the Jurassic Park music. <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> so, this actually has one of the, I don't know what you call it, like the, the singing ones. I call it Singing Monopoly. So, this is my third version. The Game of Thrones one has the, uh, uh, the throne and it plays their Jurassic, Jurassic World. It plays the Game of Thrones theme, theme theme song. I have that one and then the Lion King one has Pride Rock and it plays the Circle of Life. So I do have a couple with the sound ones and they're cool. Like they're pretty cute. I actually like hitting the button every time someone gets a chance or anything. I'm like you gotta hit the button. <laughs> so yes. What else attracted to me about this game though is, I don't know if you guys noticed this, so ever since Jurassic World came out, the whole world is Jurassic World. There's nothing Jurassic Park left. It's only Jurassic World. And I honestly wasn't a big fan of Jurassic World. It was okay, but I'm very OG. Like, I like the original Jurassic Parks. So when I saw this, if you look, it's literally just Jurassic Park. It's not Jurassic World, it's Jurassic Park which is fantastic because I think they actually have a Jurassic World Monopoly and I didn't want it because I was like, I want the OG. And it's a music one, which is great. As I say that in a Tyrannosaurus Rex roars. <laughs> so let me give you a good look of the front. So it has Jurassic Park on it, Monopoly, has the T-Rex, has the gate, and then we have Alan right here with his flare gun. Right, is that Alan? Yes, that's Alan. I want to make sure. But yeah, so we have Alan and the flare gun. And then we have the game board back here, and it shows all the pieces, and it has even a T-Rex piece. Or is he part of the game? I'm very... I, I honestly bought this, and I haven't opened it yet. So this is all new to me. Oh, it says secure the park and avoid a rampid, rampaging T-Rex interesting if you guys have um bought another monopoly version do you know some of them are different they add like different things like my uh my game of thrones one has a lot of like dark cards where you can like steal um people's houses and everything so monopoly versions do have like different rules and everything so this will definitely be interesting but let's open it and see what's going on with the t-rex <laughs> Okay, so I just cut it off, cut off the uh, tape and everything, so let's open it. Oh, oh I kind of like how they did this. It's like the cover. That's snazzy because there's the gate, and here's the gate. Oh, I like this. Is it taped in there? Hmm. So it's just a very thick box. I want to get the gate out, though. I'm doing it with one hand while I hold the camera, so. Okay, we'll just not worry about it. <laughs> so we do have some pieces. We have the dice. We have our properties. So it looks like our properties are going to be dinosaurs. Maybe we're collecting the dinosaurs. 
And then our money, of course, it just has the Jurassic Park logo and it has Jurassic, just the, yeah, nothing else to really say about it. It has the Jurassic Park logo. And then these are our chance cards. Cold storage. Hear music. Advance to any space to all the rules of that space. Interesting. I like how it's a T-Rex footprint though. And then here is the board. Oh, what are these? What are these? Gate? Are these gates? What is this madness? And here's the instructions. So maybe we should probably read the instructions. So I opened the instructions and the first thing said, what's different about Monopoly Jurassic Park Edition? That's what I'm trying to find out. So it says, the rampaging T-Rex. You play as a character from Jurassic Park and you'll move, but you also move the T-Rex on your turn. If the T-Rex passes or lands on the same space as your token, you must pay 50 50 mms to the bank. If the T-Rex lands on any property, that property is immediately damaged unless it has been protected with a fence or in, uh, in, or in some other way. What? You know, I kind of think about it. I didn't see houses or anything. Like, we just have game tokens. We just have the tokens and we have these, I think these are the fences. What is this game? I kind of love it. <laughs> Every time you pass and land on the ghost space, you must activate the park's gate by pressing the Jurassic Park button. If you hear the movie's theme song, you may collect 200 mms from the bank, but if you hear a dinosaur roar, you can only collect 100 mm. Certain cards might only also allow you to activate the gate. What? Oh my gosh, I haven't even played it and it sounds amazing. What? So that's why there. Oh, I got the gate out for you guys. Hang on. So there's the gate. I kind of wish it opened, but it doesn't, which is fine. But that's why there's a roar. Interesting. I kind of like this. Because, you know, with the Game of Thrones game and the Circle of Life one, they don't really acknowledge that it plays. It's just like a bonus thing. So I thought that's what the gate was. It was just a bonus thing to have fun with. But it actually, like, interacts with the game. What is this madness? On your turn, roll the amber die. <laughs> amber die. Be great if there's a mosquito in it. <laughs> Along with white dice, the amber die will determine how far the T-Rex moves. First, you com your combined roll then determines how far your token moves. Certain cards might allow you to roll the amber die again and move the T-Rex farther. Protective fences. You can build a fence as soon as you own just one dinosaur padlock in a color set. You do not need to own them all. Fences mean you can charge more rent and they also offer some protection from the T-Rex. If the T-Rex lands on a fence padlock, only the fence is destroyed and the padlock itself remains safe. Oh, interesting. So on here, where's the dinosaur? Does it say that, do you have to buy the fences, I wonder? Oh, so it has repair costs. Okay, rent with the, okay, so if we have a Brachiosaurus, it's rent 4Ms. Rent with fence, 10 mms, and a fence costs m. Okay, so I think you're protecting the park, which is from the T-Rex, hang on. Sorry, there's a glare. So if you guys can see that. Interesting, I kind of love this. I'm very excited to play this. This is really snazzy. So there's cards that affect it. So you're protecting the T-Rex. Okay, so instead of like chance cards, you have cold storage and impact tremor. So that's what this is. That's the impact tremor. And then, oh, cold storage. That's why this one says cold storage on it. Interesting. Oh, there's a security breach. So like your taxes are security breach and a kitchen attack. And there's still jail and everything. Okay, so the difference is the T-Rex. That's really freaking neat. And I like how you have to move them on every turn. That is snazzy and I love it. 
and I'm so excited. Okay, let's go open the board and see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I moved to my living room floor just because it was bigger, and I'm sorry about the glare. Again, my lighting isn't the greatest, but here is the board, so here is the go space. And so, like I said, I think you're collecting dinosaurs. But the one thing that's kind of, I mean, it's okay, but instead of having like, well, I kind of get it now. So you have a Brachiosaurus, and then you have Brachiosaurus too. so that's your brown spaces basically <laughs> that's what i always call them the brown spaces that are worth crap that are not worth much at all <laughs> and then so it looks like that's for each dinosaur we have brachiosaurus i cannot pronounce that one but i'm just going to call it the ducky dinosaur and then we have our jail our in jail card i actually missed these i'm sorry we have the cold storage card and the security breach like i said this is like your taxes and then this is like your chance cards. And then these are your transportations. So there should be four of them. So this one says alternate tour road. And then your impact tremor control room. I think that's another taxes. West service road. And then your next ones are triceratops. This wacky looking dinosaur. I like how it like merges into that though. That's snazzy. I like it. Oh, and then your Dilophosaurus when it's going to spit on you. I actually really love this, like, detail of it. Just, like, merging in together. That's really, really pretty. And then Gallimimus. And then here is another Taxes. And then Velociraptor, of course. We can't have Jurassic Park without Velociraptors. And then East Service Road. And then the last one ends with a T-Rex. Oh, look at that. So that's your board. And the, like the usual, they have, like, like usual, they have the spots. We have this for the trimmer, and then we have the cold storage box. And then there's the giant T-Rex. And then we have our bridge right here. So I think, I, should I put him on the Monopoly part? Because he's near go? I think that's a good spot to put him. The first piece we have is, of course, the T-Rex piece. I'm going to have to reread the rules, but I think he just starts on go like the rest of the pieces. I don't think there's actually like a designated spot for him. Hang on, focus. But there is the T-Rex. And then we have our people. And what's nice, because like I said, I love when things are just Jurassic Park and not Jurassic World 2. But these are all the ones from the movie. So our first one, of course I can identify this guy. Let's go, focus. So here's Alan Grant, and you can tell that it's this one with the hat. Um, so they're actually all this kind of silvery thing. I do wish that they were different colors just so they're more distinguished because they're all skinny people. So it's kind of hard to figure out who's who. Unless, like, they have some defining characters, which they kind of do, but I'm just saying, like, when you're playing and you're like, oh, can you move me? You have to figure out which one's you. So this one is Alan Grant, and he has his torch and his hat. So here is the next piece. This one actually took me a minute to figure out who it was. So this is actually the, the one of the little girls, and that's this is Lex. I thought it was actually her brother at first, but she does have a ponytail on the back. So this is Lex. This is one of John Hammond's grandchildren. And then this one, this one is pretty easy. I kind of figured him out if he focuses. Come on. Focus. So this is John Hammond's other grandchild, and it's Tim. You can kind of tell it's him because he has his books and everything because he was a big fan of Dr. Grant. So this is Tim. This one actually, I hate to say this, actually really disappointed me. So I grabbed this piece, and so this is actually Ian Malcolm. I feel like it does not do him justice. Um, you can, I just canceled himself out. He has these tiny little eyes, but it's probably not the best representation of Ian Malcolm. If they did sexy Ian Malcolm, you know what I'm talking about when I say sexy Ian Malcolm. If not, go Google it. <laughs> 
that would be a cool way to make the piece but this is Ian Malcolm he's my favorite so this would probably be the piece that I'll play the most but I just wish it was just a little better done because it was kind of hard to tell that it was him and the last piece that they have is Ellie Sattler you can tell it's her with her ponytail on the back and just her clothes because she wore these like ranger type shorts <laughs> and so yes this is the last one because you can't have Alan Grant with Dr. Sattler so those are the pieces they have six pieces for you to play so you can play two to six people if you wish and then you have your t-rex that's going to destruct everybody but they are ready to join the jurassic park game okay so before i end this video i am going to look at the cold storage pe cold storage pieces cards and the tremor cards because i like to see what they say and see what kind of things you'll run into so the cold storage is hear music advanced to go i think i already read that let's try another one i can see the shed from here we can make a run for it we can we can make it if we run dr ellie sattler so that's kind of cool it has a little quote for her and it says advanced to maintenance shed if you pass go do not collect any money then roll the amber die and move the t-rex that many spaces so that's kind of cool so you move it sounds like you move the t-rex on your turn and then sometimes these cards will tell you to move and then the next card is oh this one says keep this a secret play at any time dinosaurs had their shot dr ian malcolm Ooh. Trade any one of your properties for any of other players' properties. You may not trade properties that are part of a complete set. So they actually have a card like this in the Game of Thrones one, which is actually really, really snazzy. But it's saying, but, and then Jurassic Thrones, Jurassic Thrones, I don't know. The Game of Thrones one, you can actually um, take all, like a complete set and trade it with somebody or steal someone's complete set. So this is kind of cool. I like these. So these are the impact cards. And then this one's the cold storage cards. So I actually really, really like these. I don't want to read the rest of them because I don't want to spoil myself, but those are a couple of what, a couple of what they say. I'm like, I'm like geeking out right now because I just love Jurassic Park and this will be so fun to play. <laughs> okay, so I was putting the game away and I thought to myself, how does the game end? Because you don't have hotels or anything, you have fences. So I read the handy dandy Distractions. And so what happens, which is much cooler than any other Monopoly version I've owned, was so how the T-Rex destroys the properties. If you have a fence on the T-Rex, like if you have a fence on your property, the T-Rex just destroys the fence and you lose that fence. But your property is still fine. However, if the T-Rex destroys your property, then it's like how you have to mortgage it, where you have to face it upside down and if people walk on it, they can't buy it, they can't, you, they don't earn money from it basically and you have to pay it off to have the property owned again so kind of just like how normal like mortgaging however if the t-rex destroys all the properties the game's over and the t-rex wins like that's that's so awesome i mean hopefully the t-rex does not win because you want to beat the t-rex but that's how the game ends also the other way to make the game end if you don't like like if you're like awesome sauce and beating Jurassic Park is you have um, there's only one player left which is like normal monopoly so how the game ends is normal monopoly where you have one player left so that means they own all the proper like if you are run out of like if you have debt and you have no money you're out of the game basically and so if there's one person left that ends the game like like I said like normal monopoly or the t-rex wins because he destroyed all the properties so yeah that is pretty cool and I'm very very excited to play this game <laughs> all right guys so that was my look into the Jurassic Park game I hope you guys enjoyed it I actually had really fun doing it um, I'm a very very big board game player I love board games a lot so maybe if I find more board games I can review them a little bit I honestly am so so very excited to play this Jurassic Park game like I'm ready to call someone up right now and be like hey let's play some Monopoly because it's so much fun and I like how it's not like the normal Monopoly so hopefully it doesn't take as long I know that's a big issue with people when they want to play Monopoly they just think the game's too long but with the fences and everything I think that it won't take as long per usual so I think that's actually very pretty snazzy so hopefully someone will want to play with me because I'm just like very 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 pumped to play this game 
I'm like geeking out of it for how excited I am. But yes, I'm, I think this is definitely going to be played in the next couple days. <laughs> Like I said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are not, please subscribe to my channel. I will hopefully have more videos coming very soon to you all. Please give it a like and please share it if you want to share it to your favorite board game people, your favorite Jurassic Park people, because let me tell you, this game is legit the best. <laughs> so I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye!